book monsters. Today, I will review the sequel of the Orphans of the Tide book. The second one is called Shipwreck Island. It is written by Strew and Murray. It was released only a few months ago and I've been dying to read it. I reviewed Orphans of the Tide quite a while ago. So if you want to check it out after this video, the link will be in the description. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and turn on notifications as well so you will be notified whenever we upload. That's my, uh, my cat Fern, by the way, meowing. As in the first book, the two main characters are Seth and Ellie, but this time the story is set on Shipwreck Island instead of in the city, the island where they started out on in the first book. The two friends crossed an endless ocean on a raft for three months. When Ellie and Seth finally arrive, they both look for work. Seth instantly gets a job, but Ellie is having trouble finding one. But when she saved someone from a collapsing mine, she finally gets to meet the mysterious queen of the island. Ellie and the queen end up becoming great friends. Is Shipwreck Island the place where no one knows about the enemy? Just as Ellie and Seth start to settle in, things start to go downhill. Crops are not growing, which means the island is running out of food. Ellie and Seth and their new friends are faced with new problems. Will they be able to save the island? Well, that's for you to find out. Yeah, oof. <laughs> I found this book quite nerve wracking at times, but it was also totally unput downable, which it also happens to say on the cover. And it's so true. But it wasn't just the tension and the mystery that kept tagging me along. I also really liked the parallel story that weaved in and out of the story at times. It told some of Seth's history and helped shed light on important parts of the story, but only bit by bit, which also added the whole mystery. I found that very cool and unique. I hadn't come across that in a story before. I was reading this book in bed a few nights ago when my mother told us to put our lights out, but I didn't. I couldn't because it was so gripping. Wherever you stop, you're always left on a cliffhanger. Just brilliant. Shipwreck Island gets a clear five out of five. The reason for this is because I was hooked all the time. Even when I wasn't reading, I was thinking about it. And I loved that there was constant action and that every chapter ended just when it was getting super, super exciting. And that kept me on my toes. I recommend this book to readers aged nine and up. I found this book the perfect sequel to the first. It literally picked right up from where the first one left off. I haven't heard if there's going to be a third book yet, but the story isn't over, so I'm guessing there is going to be at least another book in the series. At least I really hope so. I'd love to read more about Ellie and Seth's adventures, but it probably won't be until 2022, as Shipwreck Island only just got released in March 2021. One thing I also have to mention are that there are a few pictures in the book. There aren't many, but there are a few. And I find that they are very well drawn, all of them. And I really like that because I don't see many pictures in more grown up books. Another thing I have to mention is that uh, is the cover. As you see here, it says Shipwreck Island. And then in the background, you see a huge shipwreck and a village or more like an island uh, built out of it. And that's very cool. And I also just find the cover itself is very, very nice. It is normal sized writing, I would say. I would have preferred if it were a bit smaller. But you know, that's just me. Maybe you think it's perfect the way it is. So yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.